So uh, what better place to talk about photosynthesis than next to a plant? Now, photosynthesis is somewhat complex only because it involves a lot of chemistry, but it's actually fairly straightforward. And once you sort of get it in your head, it's easy to understand and easy to comprehend. But obviously it relates to sunlight, it relates to leaves, it relates to water, and it produces, you know, everything. Like photosynthesis, as it says here, you know, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, including anaerobic respiration, which we'll, got, we'll talk about that later, provide most of the energy for life processes. Basically, what that means, without photosynthesis, you don't have almost all life on Earth. Very, very few organisms can survive without photosynthesis forming the sort of foundation, the base level of all life on Earth. So that can be in the oceans uh, with photosynthesis and something like cyanobacteria or algae, um, or it can be right here next to me with this cottonwood tree. So as I'm sure you're aware, but just in case you're not, um, sunlight, which is shining at me right now, uh, a photon of light hits a leaf, and in this leaf, uh, the photosynthesis occurs uh, using all the different sort of cellular processes that exist in this leaf, and it's absolutely amazing. So a photon of light hits the leaf. The leaf is part of a larger plant, obviously. Water and nutrition are being sucked up the roots into the leaf. And what happens in here, when that solar energy hits the leaf, it creates a chemical reaction. It facilitates a chemical reaction where you have water, which is H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Those two things alone are sort of the initial molecules that facilitate photosynthesis. Those two things combine, solar energy breaks them apart and reforms them into O2, oxygen, and C6, H12, O6, or starch, carbohydrates, glucose, sugars. Um, and that's it. So the sugars form the structure of the plant itself. The starches are carbohydrates, uh, known as sort of like cellulose. Lots of different names for the same thing. C6, H12, O6, starch. Um, or glucose and it all those things sort of form the structure of the plant the leaf the stem You know the trunk and all the branches up above all of those things are formed through that very simple process um, And then the byproduct is oxygen, which you may not know this but oxygen is actually really important for uh, your life So all of this stuff is created through something very simple happening in the leaves of a tree sunlight hits the leaf water and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere combine to form O2, which is released, that we breathe, and uh, C6, H12, O6, or starch, glucose, cellulose, which forms the structure of the plant. That structure then is consumed by other animals. The O2 is consumed by us. We process that in our body through cellular respiration and breathe out CO2, which the plant takes in. Plants also respire through cellular respiration, which I'll talk about later, but for now, the wonderful magic of, of photosynthesis. It's amazing and it's very simple and it's pretty easy to remember. Um, I'm gonna show you in a little bit how to sort of balance that equation. So as you can see here, um, my expectation is that you can actually write this all out. It's gonna take some practice, but I'll give you some time in class to practice. I'll ask you a few times to just draw it and show me a picture that illustrates photosynthesis and either uh, submit a picture or show me on your computer screen. Um, but it's pretty straightforward as I explained with the leaf, but as you can see here, there's some chemistry involved. Um, and it's a equa an equation, it's a chemical equation that's pretty easy to balance, actually. So you have on one side of the equation, obviously, carbon dioxide and water. That is CO2 and H2O. Those two things using inside the chlorophyll of the leaf, um, and combined with sunlight, you have a reaction that creates glucose or starch or cellulose, sugars, simple sugars, and uh, oxygen, those are the byproducts. And without those things, you don't have life because as you may be aware that all the food you eat, with very few exceptions, begins as a plant. Um, even if you eat meat, that meat eventually, or at some point, ate a plant. If you eat plants, which you should, um, obviously they rely on photosynthesis to develop and grow. Without photosynthesis, without the nutrients also sucked up uh, by the roots in the water, uh, you don't have all these magical things occurring uh, in our ecosystems. And the more we disrupt ecosystems, the more we disrupt the soil, um, the harder it is for plants to produce their food and uh, you know, do the wonderful job that they do. So I hate to do this to you, but let's do a little bit of math. Um, you have all of our sort of components of the photosynthesis equation. Once again, as I've said maybe four times by now, CO2, H2O, C6H12O6, and O2. Now, let's start with 
that C6H12O6. We know exactly how many different atoms of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, C, H, and O, there are in that glucose molecule. So let's sort of start from there and see if we can extrapolate out uh, how many different other components there need to be in order to form this you know, product to allow photosynthesis to occur. Now, this is not something that's super duper important to know, but it's kind of fun. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of math. So if we have that many of the individual atoms in the starch or glucose molecule, then if you look at the next slide, we have six carbon dioxide molecules. We have six water molecules. Those things combine to form one glucose or starch molecule and to form six oxygen molecules. So for every six H2O and CO2, you can get one glucose and six oxygen. And that's all it is. It's pretty simple. Considering that if you look outside or look inside or look almost everywhere around you and think about everything you've ever eaten, all of that comes from this simple equation. I don't know, it's pretty amazing to me. So here's the hard part, even though it's not really that hard. I want you to be able to draw photosynthesis and you can expect that I'm gonna ask you to show me this. So what I want you to be able to do is use these terms and draw how photosynthesis works. You don't need to know the equation. I'm not asking you that you memorize the equation, although I will most likely give extra credit for people that can balance that equation. But anyway, as you can see here, what I want you to be able to do is use these terms. So solar energy or photon, oxygen or O2, carbon dioxide or CO2, glucose or C6H12O6, water or H2O, and chloroplast, which is a plant organelle. Use all of those terms in an illustration, a drawing. It can be very simple of photosynthesis. So I want you to be able to do that. So make sure you can. Food is good. It helps you stay alive. And while photosynthesis produces, at least directly or indirectly, almost everything you eat, there's something going on in your body that fits within the, after that and in that initial statement where photosynthesis and cellular respiration help sort of all the processes that make life on Earth possible. Sure, without photosynthesis, we wouldn't have plants, but without cellular respiration, we wouldn't have much of anything either. Both of these things go together exceptionally well. So let me just walk you through it pretty quickly. Sunlight hits a grape leaf. It creates energy. That sunlight, that photon, combined with water and CO2, mixes up in that leaf, and that leaf then produces glucose, which it stores in the plant as either fruit in the form of grapes or structure in the form of like stems and leaves, and then uh, off gases oxygen that we breathe in. Now we also eat food, the food that is produced through photosynthesis and that creation of things like glucose, sugar, like a grape. Now, in our body, there's another process that has inputs and outputs that's really important. And both photosynthesis and respiration go together to form this wonderful synergistic loop that we take for granted, that we know very little about, but is what's keeping us alive. So this food goes into my body. I also breathe in or respire oxygen. I'm breathing in oxygen, I'm eating food. In my cells, that oxygen combined with the glucose in that food creates energy in the form of something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, in the mitochondria, or the powerhouse uh, of our cells. So the mitochondria is an organelle, it's a cell organelle that has an amazing story to tell, which maybe we'll get to when we talk about cells. But we breathe in that O2, we eat the glucose, our cells take O2 and glucose and basically create a tiny little explosion inside of our cells that release heat, that's why your body is warm, and create different sort of things that the cells do. They store energy, they transport materials, they transport information, they do all sorts of really cool things that keep you alive. So while photosynthesis is the sexiest, I guess, um, component in photosynthesis and respiration. Respiration is really important as well. It happens in plants, it happens in animals, and it keeps you alive. And while ATP, mitochondria, respiration are these sort of complex and somewhat boring ideas, uh, without them, you're dead. So remember that. I'll show you some images, obviously. Mitochondria, chloroplasts. And one thing you might notice is that 
all the inputs and outputs associated with photosynthesis are pretty much the same as respiration. O2, water, glucose, carbon dioxide. Those are inputs and outputs for both. In fact, the inputs for one are the outputs for the other. Pretty amazing. So anyway, uh, when you're eating your grapes or enjoying the wonderful leaf of a grape plant, or really any plant, think about photosynthesis and respiration as they work together. Um, like I said, you're going to have to know a little bit, even though there's a lot to know, and I'll help you through it. So, that being said, hopefully you enjoyed this two-part lecture, and hopefully you're going to come to class this week prepared to draw both photosynthesis and respiration. That is your goal this week. Without these two processes, we do not have life on Earth, and we don't have a lot else on Earth as well. Without life, we don't have the atmosphere that we have now. We don't have the rocks that we have now. We don't have energy. We don't have coal. We don't have oil. We don't have limestone. We don't have so many things without life, without these two fundamental components of life. So think about that. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye. Ha 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 ha!